In this GarageBand tutorial, I'm going to show you everything you'll need to know in under 10 minutes to start a song from scratch. Two things though before we get started. The first thing is I have a longer extended GarageBand tutorial, so if you want maybe something that goes more in depth to each of the GarageBand sections, I'll leave a link in the description. The second thing is if you want to follow along to the same GarageBand template that I'll be using in this tutorial, there's a free download link in the description as well. So check that out so we can be following the same template. Okay, now let me tell you what things we're gonna cover in this video. We'll talk about how to get started, we'll get into recording MIDI, then into recording audio, we'll talk about how you build a song, we'll talk about how you mix the song and add effects to the song, we'll talk about my favorite shortcuts that you can use, and then we'll be able to export our song as an MP3 that we can share with our friends. I've already eaten up a lot of my time, so let's start the clock now. GarageBand is free and you can find it on your Mac computer. Go to Applications and look for GarageBand. When you open up GarageBand, you're going to be greeted with the track that you were working on before. If you want to start something from fresh, you go up to the top, click File and New. GarageBand will ask you what type of track type you want to start. Is it a software instrument, an audio, or a drummer? For our circumstances, we're going to start with a drummer track so we can have a beat to play along with. And we'll be using audio tracks and software instrument tracks in just a little bit. We have a drummer track and it's called SoCal Kyle. And if we press spacebar, we can hear exactly what that sounds like. It's like if we don't like the sounds of that, we have the option to edit this. And so we can go to the bottom here and click different buttons if we want claps, if we want shakers, if we want tambourines. The best way to do this though is clicking this little yellow thing and just dragging it. Use this square and drag it to the appropriate dynamics you want. It's a little slow for me, so before I start building my song, I'm gonna wanna lock in a tempo. So right now we're at 100. I'm gonna wanna put that to 130. Okay, so now that we have our drummer track and we have our tempo locked in, we can start building our song. And so I'm gonna click the scissor icon here and the library icon here to have more space. And now we're going to add a software instrument track. I'm going to play the piano. If you would rather play the guitar as your main instrument or something else, um, that's completely fine. So we're gonna start with a piano software instrument track. So we'll add software instrument and create. And now I have, uh, by default, a classic electric piano here, but I can go over and choose any type of instrument the GarageBand offers me. And now I'm going to press record and put something right below here. So what we're gonna wanna do now, because I wasn't completely playing in time, and that's okay if you don't, because with MIDI we can move things around and use quantization. So we're going to double click this, and we're gonna quantize our notes. So drag this up and press this icon to make some space. Zoom out a little bit by just pinching my trackpad. I'm going to do Command A and then press this Q here. And that's going to lock my notes in place with my beat. And so I can press Enter to have the cursor go back to position one and press space to hear what that sounds like. Cool, I liked it when it stops right here and I want that to loop back. So I'm gonna click this and do Command T cut that and then I'm just gonna highlight and delete this. And I'm gonna press L on each of these tracks to loop them continuously, just so I can get an idea. Now I'm going to add a bass track. So I'll click up here, go up to another track, software instrument track and create, and quickly lay down a bass track. And I will do this exactly the same way I did the piano and I can continue doing this with other software instruments. So I added a heavy sub bass and then I added a lead synth over it here. And I used my MIDI keyboard and played along with it. So here's what it sounds like right now. You can add a track and we're going to record using a microphone. For this section, you will need one of two things. You will need a microphone that plugs directly into your computer through a USB, or you will need an audio interface. So let's record using a microphone. And before we click create, we wanna answer these sentences correctly right here. It says, my instrument is connected with USB PMP audio device and I hear sound from. Basically, this is saying your, your, your instrument or your microphone, what is it connected to? Is it connected to your audio interface or is it connected directly to your computer? And you're, want, you're going to want to clarify that in this section. You'll also wanna clarify it in the I hear sound from section where 
Where do you want to hear the sound from? Do you want to hear it coming out of the headphones? Do you want to hear it coming out of the computer? Or do you have um, speakers you want to hear it out from? So here we have our audio track and we can click record and start recording audio right away. So we want peaks and valleys. And in order for us to do that, we want different sections. Let's have an intro verse section, a pre-chorus section and a chorus section. Let me show you what I did here. I split the song up into different sections to give it that peaks and valleys. So I have an intro here, um, a verse one, a pre-chorus and a chorus, and then back into a verse two. And then it kind of tails off and we can extend it from there if we'd like. So the biggest thing I did without adding any loops, cause I could have come and added any loops here and that's fine. But the biggest thing you can do is to um, give dynamics in the drums. And I did that by quickly going to the editor windows of each drum and just playing around with the different drum presets here and different drummers that we have on the side. And I just kind of like went around with this yellow dot until I found something that I like that had a verse vibe and then I had a pre-chorus vibe and then a chorus vibe. And that's all I did there. I added a lower octave piano in the chorus just to give it some weight. And then I added a new synth lead melody and I panned one to the left and one to the right and then I turned them back low and put some reverb on it so it would it sounds like they're really in behind the mix. Then I added some synth strings to give it some more weight in the low end and then I added like an automation synth string um, that fades into the chorus to give it that feeling of a drop. And so if I press A you can see here and if I just play this back and solo this like That sounds cool, right? Because it's leading, kind of leading into the chorus. The mix and effects section is going to be fast. So how I do a mix is I'm going. I would turn all these volumes to zero and then slowly fade them up over time as the track is being played and just go until they feel right. Uh, so let's have a listen now to the changes that I just made and we can play with these volume faders. So I'm going to turn them all the way down and then. Um, just play it four or five times and switch those volume knobs until it feels good enough to you. And then if we want to add effects, every channel, sorry, every track here has an effect. And so we can press B to bring up the control window. And this is where we can play with the controls here or the EQ, but we can also add effects. And these are called plugins. And we can add more plugins to this Steinway Grand Piano. We can add more plugins to my vocals. And that's how you would add effects. The best thing though about GarageBand is it just comes with thousands of presets. So you don't really need to go too deep into the world of effects because if you have a vocal that you don't know how to add effects on, just use one of the presets that are available in GarageBand. For example, if we have our audio track here and we don't know how to add a reverb, we'll just use one of the presets available. This is a bright vocal. This is a classic vocal, a compressed vocal. Maybe you're in dance music, you have a dance vocal preset there for you. So you don't have to worry about EQing or adding compression or reverb to your vocal because the presets will do it for you. So stick to the presets if you're just beginning with GarageBand. Okay, let's get to some of my favorite shortcuts quickly. Why would be opening up our library. And so if we're on a audio channel and we want to switch that, we can open up Y and then switch that to a bright vocal. Close down and press Y. We have the bottom control window, which we can press B to bring up or bring down. And then we also have the editor window, which is if you want to edit these drums, you can press E. Spacebar, obviously, to do the playback, stop and play, and then R on your keyboard to record. You also have Command K, which brings up your musical typing keyboard. A couple more, you have Enter to bring your cursor playhead back to position one. Use that a lot. And this yellow bar at the top, you can move around if you want to go on, have that go on and off, you can press C, it's the cycle bar. If you want to know more shortcuts, just go up to the menu here and they're always on the right side here. So just look at these shortcuts 
or put this information bar on and it will put yellow tags over everything and it will tell you the shortcuts. Okay, so now let's export this song so um, you can share it to your friends. How we're gonna do that is bounce it as an MP3 or wave. We can also share the entire GarageBand project um, if you want to share it with your friend and work on the same project together. But it's at share at the top and you can send it to iTunes or SoundCloud or export song to disk. And that's what we're gonna do. We wanna get a file of the song. Um, choose the name, export it here as an MP3 or a wave. If you're just sharing it to a friend for them to listen to, MP3 is the best. If you want to know more, please do check out that extended GarageBand tutorial that I have where I do go deeper into song arrangements and all the things that GarageBand has. I'm a singer-songwriter myself, so I have all my music and I use GarageBand and Logic Pro to make all my music. So if you're curious to what that sounds like, please feel free to check it out. I hope you subscribe and hope to see you in the next video.